With that, we're going to go back to now Chair Shiketti of the Ad Hoc Committee to Investigate Alternatives to Mandatory Malpractice Insurance for consideration by the WSBA and the Washington Supreme Court. Thank you, President Jumdar. Um I'm going to be brief. Uh, the uh, committee has been working several times. We will continue to work throughout the summer uh, with the anticipated having a product toward the end of the summer to bring back to the uh, Board of Governors at that time. Um, and I invite uh, uh, Chief Ende and uh, Program Manager Jennings to um, <coughs> chip uh, chime in if I forget anything in my update. Um, we, Like I say, we've been meeting several times. Um, former Governor uh, Cherry and former Governor Bridges, along with uh, Governor Tollefson, uh, Governor Grabicki, and uh, Governor Hunter, and several other members of our association have been looking at what other states have been doing as alternatives to mandatory malpractice insurance um, and what could be accomplished for our own state to move the ball forward uh, toward um, uh, doing something to encourage uh, members to have insurance and also to protect the public, which is first and foremost. Um, <clears throat> we uh, had a very good presentation by the Proactive Management Based Regulation Program out of Illinois um, that uh, is a, a very good program that, that talks about uh, uh, learning and, uh, and and counseling uh, as the base for um, ensuring that we don't have malpractice issues and uh, the need for insurance, which was good. Um, it's a spending program. Um, so we, we're, we're continuing to look at that, but more um, probably applicable programs um, now that we're focused on uh, that in similar to other states where there's a uh, notification to clients um, that someone does not have uh, mandatory malpractice or doesn't have insurance protection um, so that ensures that the, the clients understand that going in when they choose their attorney to represent them. <clears throat> now, there's very variations of that um, that the committee is uh, examining um, uh, from uh, notification in the engagement letter to um, obtaining actual consent from the clients, um, what communications will need to have that notification in, um, and, and other sticky issues that uh, we just had a, a meeting earlier this week, um, further refining those, those, those um, issues, uh, all kind of putting our heads together, figuring out where the landmines land, um, and where uh, we might be able to do um, something that alleviates confusion and issues if we're going to go forward with any program at all. Um, so like I said, we're going to continue on uh, throughout the summer. Um, one, one thing I should mention, and, and I don't, I'm not sure uh, where this, this came from, but um, we have, I have heard lately that there was some, um, and I've been receiving some emails and calls about uh, the concern about mandatory malpractice again. And I should clarify that this is a committee to examine alternatives to mandatory malpractice insurance. Um, and, you know, the motivating that our motivating our committee, as uh, former Governor Cherry reminds me all the time, is that there is a comment and a proposal to the Supreme Court that they enact mandatory malpractice <clears throat> that is going outside of the WSBA. And I think it's important um, for our process as well to continue to examine these issues and see if there is something short of mandatory malpractice that would work in Washington. Um, and so that's our charge. Uh, so let's not, not be confused that uh, we're, this is another attempt by the WSBA to mandate mandatory malpractice insurance. I think if that comes about, that's going to be in a separate um, a separate program, not this one. So we will continue our work. Um, uh, we'll have one or two more meetings to solidify uh, some of the, the initial um, thoughts and make sure that we don't have any unintended consequences um, for what we might be proposing. Uh, and I expect we'll hear more, maybe not in July, but maybe at our August meeting. 
Great. Thank you, Governor Chiquetti. I appreciate you dealing with this hard task that we've set out in the purposes to avoid the imposition of mandatory malpractice insurance. Are there any questions from the governors or comments at this time? Governor Tollefson. Okay. Well, I don't have a, uh, this is really for more for uh, our interim executive director, Tara Nevitt, and uh, discussion about, I, I got an email late last night from Governor Hunter, I think she sent a copy to, uh, to Ms. Nevitt about all these emails she's received on this MMI stuff. Did you get all that, Ms. Nevitt? Yes, we did. Oh. It was too late to get them in the board book, but we will certainly circulate them. Okay, so good. I just want to make sure that was going to be done because that was yeah. uh, Governor Hunter's request. Absolutely. Thank all you. All right, thanks. And Dr. Higginson? Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. President. I just wondered if um, the committee had had looked into it all the possibility of self-insuring and you know, just creating a risk pool among all the practicing attorneys and other professionals, legal licensed legal professionals in the state, and uh, seeing if there would if there could be that could be done, what the cost might be. My sense is that people uh, who uh, are required to have malpractice insurance. Um, or want to have it, I should actually more properly put it, would love to have an alternative to the uh, private market right now. So I just wondered if that had been considered at all or discussed. We have had some discussions about that. That's not been our primary focus as of late. We um, have focused on the notification as um, something that have, uh, we have seen or others have seen in other states that have encouraged folks to uh, get insurance. And that, like I said, moves the ball forward, at least for those 14% of our population or our members who do not have um, uh, insurance. But that is an excellent idea and something that should be explored, maybe not as the first step, but maybe the second step um, in our process. And I should mention also that uh, um, much thanks to uh, Governor Hunter and the Member Engagement Committee, too, because they've been important in communicating and getting communications to us about the uh, feelings as to not only mandatory malpractice, but also the alternatives. Um, so she has been a good resource for us, and I look forward to continuing to work with her. Former Governor Cherry. Yes, I'm going to uh, disagree with Governor Sacchetti a little bit. I, I appreciate Governor Hunter's work to try to get feedback from uh, the members. However, I think it's very important that any poll of the members be phrased correctly. And I feel that Governor Hunter's last message, if it's the one that these messages came from, very much leaned towards a statement indicating that we were looking at mandatory malpractice insurance. And I think that that may have affected some of the comments that came back. Um, again, I, I, that's how I interpreted it. It was my interpretation of her email, which I received. And I did not feel it reflected the work that we're working on. Thank you. And President Majumdar, if I may respond. Please. So um, I, do, I do think that that communication may have been uh, misunderstood. I don't necessarily think that the responses, if you've read a few of the responses, um, they are applicable. Some of them talk about alternatives. I, I, I think maybe there was a miscommunication and that a, a misperception is what I wanted to correct earlier. Um, I, I do think that the, all of the email that was sent, and I haven't had a chance to go through all of it, but the ones that I have had, um, they are uh, something that our committee should look at because they don't just concentrate on mandatory malpractice. And again, our, our charge again is alternatives to mandatory malpractice. So, um, and I invite the public and whoever is listening that uh, shout to us for comments regarding those alternatives as Governor Higgins just did. And we would be um, excited and welcoming to, to review those. Great. Well, thank you so much for your work, uh, everyone on that committee, and looking at these important things. Uh, the members and this board has expressed its will to the court about what we'd like to see, but 
it's good to have some alternatives we can propose to the court and share with the court. Okay, thank you so much. With uh, that, um, President Magemner, President yeah. Magemner, let me um, offer uh, uh, this Chief Ende if uh, Oh, you... I'm sorry, his hand is up. Yes, uh, Chief Disciplinary Officer uh, Doug Ende would uh, approach the podium. That would be fantastic. Thank you, <coughs> President Magemner. I'll be brief. I just wanted to share a perspective, a staff perspective, working with this uh, ad hoc committee. It's been very gratifying uh, to watch um, this group come together from diverse uh, areas of uh, the bar, members of the former task force, members of the Committee on Professional Ethics, governors, um, others who, uh, um, including Mr. Cherry, who are very vocally opposed to mandatory malpractice insurance and in, a, in, a, in an expeditious way work together, not always agreeing, but working together on the specific charge uh, given them uh, by uh, the president in forming this task force. And uh, I think the board will receive a very well thought out and insightful proposal, whether the board agrees with it or not, that's another question. But uh, I've been impressed with the, the work of the group. Thank you so much. Question. Governor question. Bell? Did someone say question? I heard I someone did. say question. I did, Rajiv. It's Bill. Oh, past President Pickett. Right, just a question, Kyle. Who, who, who are, are you still entertaining suggestions for alternatives, or is that process done? Uh, absolutely. If you want to submit some, some comments to our committee, we would be glad to have them. I, I would, uh, and I've got just some ideas I would like to share, and I won't do it now, but that's all I needed to know, and I'll, who would I, should I contact you, or? Yes, please contact me. Okay, happy to. Thanks, thanks, Kyle. Appreciate your work on this. Thank you. Wonderful.